A very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, myself, Professor Suthur S. Mavini, Chairperson, Department of Studies in Zoology and Department of Studies in Genetics and Genetics. A warm welcome to all of you for this webinar. It's my pleasure to invite our special guest today to deliver a talk on body and organ donation awareness program, Dr. N.M. Sham Sundar. I welcome you, sir, for Thank this program. You. And uh, let me introduce, it's a pleasure and indeed honor to me to introduce a humble and great human being, a great personality, Dr. Sham Sundar, sir. He served as a senior professor of anatomy, working in the department uh, of uh, JSS Hospital for the past 36 years. He was at the Faculty of Biomedical Sciences. He did uh, his uh, MBBS from um, JSS College once again, and he established, that's most important, JSS Body Donation Association as a secretary 26 years back with the highest number of registration, 3,414 and donations of 447 in the country, first person in India and maybe second in the world to design a new technique of dry preservation of specimen called plastination. He developed a large anatomy museum visited by hundreds of students and public and established first depression brain bank in the department of anatomy. And he could uh, get many projects funds from DDT, DST and RT, UHSF. And he's actively involved in many activities like a medical exhibition, free medical checkup camps, etc. And for his credit, he has awarded more than 75 hours and felicitation. And he instituted Dr. Manna Krishna Memorial Gold Medal in the name of his father. That itself shows uh, his uh, personality. And he's a member of International Society for Plastination, Anatomical Society of India, and many more. And he has awarded Best Teacher Bharat Jyoti Award from Delhi. Then Best Program for Teachers, that's a national award. Indira Gandhi Gold Medal Award, Lifetime Achievement Award, Best Paper in Genetics Gold Medal, then Best Science Communicator Award, and Fellow of Association Biotechnology and Pharmacy, Lifetime Achievement Award, then Best Paper Award uh, from uh, uh, Indo-US Conference, many more awards and credits. And moreover, very uh, thing, important thing is his mother and sister bodies have been donated to anatomy department and they, it is plastinated and he is known as a 10 rupees doctor in Mysore. He has treated so many people, did more than 3000 surgeries with a low cost to reach uh, poor people and he is a committed worker and he has done a lot of health awareness program and that has been telecasted in uh, uh, Durdarshan Chandana. And he is a, a resource person for many organizations. And really, I am proud to congratulate and introduce this simple and humble personality with high positive attitude. And uh, he was a classmate to many of my teachers in uh, zoology and botany. And uh, uh, after a cut, he is a great chef great human and great counselor and with this few words i welcome you sir thank you sir. for this webinar you. thank you um, at the outset let me thank the vice chancellor and all the faculty of the university of mysore and specifically at malini and uh, her colleagues both in the department of zoology and uh, genetics since we are uh, but isolated here and none of them have any corona related issues i would uh, like to take off my mask it becomes uh, clearer for the people to understand uh, can you have the slides uh, maybe because of the affectionate respect that malini has uh, 
told a lot of good things about me. It may not be really uh, great, but anyway, I've been doing my sincere uh, duty as a basic doctor and a teacher. <clears throat> In about uh, 45 minutes from now, I'd like to share some of my, I would say even personal experiences regarding uh, how we can be useful or helpful to others. That's my basic uh, concept. It's not that only doctors have to be great or useful and all that, but others also can be equally useful to others. That's my today's concept. Wishing you a very warm welcome with this Brahma Kamala. Those who are from outside Mysore, very warm welcome to Mysore. I'm a Mysorean. I feel proud to be a part of Mysore, a great city, city of palaces. The same Mysore palace, which is seen now during the day, when seen at night, looks gorgeous. I always remember this because whatever you do, whatever you are, try to make it more beautiful, more meaningful. That's my concept. In fact, uh, I should uh, mention to you one small experience. When I went to Sydney, Australia for an international uh, uh, conference on plastination, <laughs> many other people who had come from other countries other than India say they were uh, flabbergasted. What is this? great building. So I explained to them, this is Mysore Palace. They said this uh, something wonderful. You are lucky to be there in that uh, city. So people really ap appreciate the beauty of this Mysore Palace. I belong to a great, I would say, a social organization, one of the best uh, medical colleges in uh, not only Karnataka, in India, which has been managed and uh, blessed by Swamiji. So very encouraging person. Whatever we want to do, he says, go ahead do still better. So in that way, my presence in the JSS Medical since its inception, 1985, has been very fruitful and I'm extremely happy. And uh, most of the time, whenever we meet him, he says, what good things have, have you done to the society? So that is the philosophy we have been following that. So this is my college. The photograph, uh, the insert you see is the previous Swamiji, whose dream was to have a medical college, particularly meant for very poor people from villages. So I belong to this college. And we have one of the best hospitals in India, I would say. This is the biggest hospital in whole India, 1,800 beds, with all specialities and super specialities, you name it. One more thing I'm always proudly mentioning is the, the registration charges on the day one when you go there is only 50 rupees. With that 50 rupees uh, registration charges for 365 days, one year, you can consult any number of doctors, any number of times. It may be an ordinary physician or it may be a cardiologist or a specialist. Only the investigations and the ward charges, if admitted, even th those are at minimum. So in that way, a lot of uh, villages, poor people come. The average uh, outpatient uh, goes to 2000 per day and people are quite dedicated. So in that way, I feel proud to be a part of this uh, great institution. It is me, as uh, Madam uh, Manley has already told. In addition to my work as a professor, I was there as a head of the department for nearly 16 years out of 36 years. Now, because of the UGC norms, there's a rotation of HOD's post. I continue as a senior professor. And all the one dozen people who are in my department, all of them are directly or indirectly my students, either in the UG days or the PG days. So they are proud of me. There's absolutely no difference of opinion. And after the college, instead of uh, sitting at home, watching a TV or chit-chatting or wasting my time, I thought let me be of some help, uh, more of a personal happiness, I would say. In the evenings and at night, I have a small clinic in uh, Mysore. Before joining JSS, I was also I had the opportunity of... Uh, having a higher training in period surgery. And I always tell my students, not just a study, right? You should have hobbies. I'm sure everyone has got hobbies. They are really good in that. Most of the time what they do is, even the parents are at mistake, I would say. They say, don't uh, uh, go for sports, stop all those music or any other hobbies. You concentrate on the studies. No, it's totally wrong. You have to give a couple of hours every day to those hobbies because 
the hobbies are the ones which build up your personality apart from the knowledge and i wouldn't have been able to sit in front of you and talk if i didn't have hobbies i am on to the stage regarding music or any other things i am into plays or uh, whatever fine arts and crafts so i request all the people who are listening to me and their parents to encourage the children a couple of one or two hours including the days of examination that relaxes your mind as a doctor you know stress is one of the most dangerous thing stress can cause uh, havoc and long term stress also can uh, lead to cardiac problems renal problem neurological problem including the worst cancer so never never allow the children or the youngsters to go for uh, stress a half an hour to one hour of a change in their uh, routine decreases the stress for which hobbies are great so evenings uh, i like to spend some time uh, maybe with my hobbies of music or fine arts or whatever i have a lot, lot of hobbies i'll talk to you a little later and maybe in an hour or two i have a clinic i do family practice and a uh, lot of my friends and others refer patients with small surgical problem i operate in my own clinic since uh, 36 years i have been doing it even yesterday morning uh, instantly i had operated one of my uh, close friends she is working as a staff nurse in a hospital nearby she said sir uh, i got a small lump in the breast can you please operate i was really shocked you are working in a hospital why didn't you consult your own surgeons she said no sir i got a lot of uh, respect confidence in you the belief that matters a lot so it's not only medical profession any profession belief matters a lot a for attitude b for belief so in that way building a good interrelationship is important she said that she didn't feel the pain at all it hardly took about 15 minutes for me to take out that lump and uh, yesterday night she called up today morning also she called up she said fine sir so much thankful to you so that is my philosophy my simple philosophy is if i can see a smiling face a satisfied face and a face with some sort of a respect for me or a satisfaction for me there is more than a million dollars so money doesn't come to picture at all and nowadays we have realized that money absolutely has no value when it comes to health so health is the most important thing so as a doctor as a teacher i like to spend a number or two in my clinic advise them counsel them build up a lot of uh, uh, hopes and uh, um, confidence positive attitude i got a lot of positive attitude so which i have to transfer so what i am trying to stress here is children the youngsters uh, or the futures of our country have to have a lot of positive attitude and the hobbies and other aspects are going to go a long way in their personality building and their future so this is a small shot of my clinic it looks very simple it doesn't even look like a clinic i got a small museum also there children uh, come there all the different organs i kept their heart lungs liver kidneys they bring their classmates very very interesting ukg lkg children they bring their classmates say uncle i want to show my friend the heart kidney and all that i said go ahead don't make noise so that's the way we have to educate people to uh, regarding health education right so my uh, anatomy department is unique because we always believe in doing something different every medical college has to have a anatomy department but our department uh, is a little unique <laughs> what is it i'll tell you a little later so i have got a more than a dozen colleagues as you can see then most of them are uh, women here and there we are uh, men here the people on the back some of them at least are doctors i'm there on the right corner with a half a sleeve shirt <laughs> and uh, my attendants technicians are there uh, luckily i would uh, say that they are all happy with me i'm definitely happy with them so is a question of interpersonal relationship build up ah uh, yes this is our anatomy museum one of the uh, they would say i don't know because i belong to the college or department they say this is one of the best museums in india very well uh, organized systematically organized different uh, regions of the body different organs dissected out some uh, diseased organs are also kept and almost every week unfortunately due to this uh, covid since one year uh, we are not permitting uh, children or students almost every week one or the other school students or the college students come there is absolutely no charges we are very proud one of us uh, take them like a tour explain to them and uh, very happy thing from our side is those who have uh, visited there during 9th standard or 10th standard puc after many years they have come to me to my chamber saying that sir uh, 
uh, I'm admitted to this college for her first MBBS. Okay, good, congrats, go ahead. Any other problem? So one more thing I wanted to tell, yes, tell me. When I was in uh, 10th standard SSLC, I had visited your uh, uh, museum, sir. On that day, I decided I must study very hard, uh, struggle uh, for getting good marks, and I wanted to become a doctor. Today, the dream has come true. What a good motivation, isn't it? So in that way, we encourage people to not only study better, not necessarily everybody should become doctors, but some knowledge, hard work, sincere work. And also regarding the health, people should be able to, some people just come, say, so would like to see the liver, sir. One of our relatives has a liver cancer. So we explain to them. In that way, a lot of health education we take up in this. Uh, and I must uh, show my gratitude, not only to my colleagues and general public. These are the specimens of people who donated their bodies. Yes, this is what is today's topic. If people did not donate their bodies, I had to only show a model, plastoparis or a fiberglass model or some photographs. So each specimen we give respect because with them we are able to become doctors, become surgeons and educate them with real actual specimens. Here's another photograph of all my colleagues. Uh, there was a function in the college so you can see them in a little different attire. So donation, what is this donation? It's not the Oxford Dictionary, I made my own donation. It's a voluntary giving of something to another person with a good intention, that's very important without expecting anything in return. This is extremely important. If you expect something you give, it becomes a business, not a donation. It may be money, it may be food, it may be materials, anything. There's also a funny thing here. Changing. Sometimes donation causes problem. Yes. Yes. Voluntary giving something to another person, it may be anything. The purpose is I'm happy to give it, she's happy to receive it. Thus, happiness should be there. Probably may we make a joke. Advice is the only thing that we give freely to others, any amount of advice, even without asking, also we give. Anyway, that's also good. So let's uh, look into this uh, organ donation. I'm uh, very sincerely attached to this because uh, my personality is trying to do something good to others and making others do good things to others. That's my intention as a doctor, that as an anatomist. All these are noble donations. People can forget. You give money, that's forgotten once it is given up. Give anything else. We always say, my mother used to say, you give anything, they say, this is all. You could have given more money, materials, yes. Maybe food is the only thing that we say, no, no, enough, enough. But there's another concept, another way where we can really do something good to others. Noble donations, they are really noble. Blood donations, which we are heard of it a lot. Maybe a few words, we'll talk it later. Organ donation, that's what is most important. All Everything about it, we'll discuss. Eye donation, great. And body donation also is another concept. Uh, we'll be going to a little more detail about each one of them. Uh, we'll have a little better list. Cornea or the eye donation. Heart is very popular nowadays. Heart being given out from a person who was brain dead and is working in somebody. Kidney donation, so important uh, uh, that is uh, saving another person's life. Lungs are also being donated. Pancreas, another organ which uh, produces insulin, uh, produces enzymes for digestion. Yes, nowadays is becoming popular. Skin, it is surprising. Skin can also be donated. Bones and bone marrow, the soft tissue present in the middle of the bone. Different tissues can be donated, like bone and all that. Hierarchical, our college speciality. So what is it uh, we are going to do with that? We just have a look and go back to donation proper. It is not only for saving somebody else's life, are helping in uh, recouping the uh, failed organ or damaged organ, diseased organ, cancerous organ. But apart from that, a few more words I will tell before we go to the donation proper. We need to teach medical, dental, Ayurveda, nursing and other courses. My role as a teacher in a medical college is to make future doctors who are efficient, knowledgeable and safe 
people should not comment who is this bloody fellow who created so much a problem did not treat me who gave a degree to him who taught him that shouldn't happen i should be proud of my students people should always say that yes doctor i've been treated by a doctor so and so who happens to be your student that's the way we teachers work teaching of junior doctors at pg level md ms or whatever they have to be trained in their specialties the bodies or the organs are uh, very much useful to that teaching our students in general public also we take it up as a health and uh, disease a single sentence many times has uh, mattered a lot i tell the person who is smoking you are going to die sometimes we are harsh we have to be frank if you do not uh, stop smoking or stop drinking some people are taken so seriously i felt bad was i too harsh the son comes and tells sir we have been telling since many many years he never start but the way you told yesterday you know, he took it seriously because he has a lot of respect for you since morning uh, he has been telling half a dozen times because of sham sundar i have left i want to be healthy till the last uh, so such things do happen and uh, different organs we use for our teaching purposes since late this happens to be dr pushpalata presently she is the head of the department and she uh, is my student also was a student of uh, ms anatomy so students are curious you know that it's not only in the museum that we have specimens even in the theory classes we take these specimens so they are always curious you can see them uh, watching that very curiously we have a dissection theater where the bodies one batch of uh, 15 to 20 students are given one full dead body which have been donated and full one year we have a program each uh, day they are given a specific area and they study that every millimeter of it every muscle every bone every nerve every artery they are 100% i always tell uh, other teachers for example dr malini is a great teacher wonderful teacher very popular teacher because uh, she says a small mistake made or other okay your intention right okay should have uh, been right they do correction even in the examination they give okay i have given uh, marks you should not make mistakes or blunders but unfortunately we are very very harsh teachers and harsh examiners when the student does not answer a important question very very crucial question we say why you didn't uh, study whatever explanations he may give saying that i studied i forgot i got confused we frankly tell doesn't matter life is a very very long time process study very well come back after 6 uh, months or 3 months whatever the examination like if i am the examiner again definitely i'm going to give a pass but not today because a wrong student a student with a bad knowledge can become a bad doctor and he can kill somebody he can cause more harm to the patient not that other professions are going to be careless or no but ours is a dealing direct face to face and we deal with the life and death so if we just give a pass to any student the value of our profession goes up and something goes wrong and if you believe in papa punya karma dharma and all that i may be part of it so we are harsh so people have realized students have realized it's not like any other course we have to be clear so in that way we are uh, every day we have uh, two hours of day sections and we tell them once you realize that how important is the knowledge when they become uh, go to the clinical side second year third year fourth year when they become doctors even some of them have come back and told me sir you had scolded me right in the first uh, minute make made me stand up scolded me why do you remember all that bad things i say now you are associate professor no sir i'm telling you because you scolded that's why i became serious i felt guilty now i'm really proud that you if you had not scolded maybe i wouldn't have been uh, whatever of today so in that way we, we try to make it a little harsh so that quality is maintained training of doctors diagnostic purposes the bodies are used for different uh, uh, training purposes surgical operations we conduct uh, workshops and uh, conferences uh, bodies are used uh, almost every month except this corona time every month we have one or the other department orthopedics department anesthesia department ent department neurosurgery department general surgery department they say shamsundar sir uh, we need about eight bodies can you provide yes very much so people from surgeons or clinicians and especially from different parts of the india they come some of them are very great people they come and demonstrate 
So these uh, donated bodies, donated organs, some of them just want organs, they don't want bodies. So we procure the organs, keep it, preserve them and make them ready. So they can be trained with new uh, surgical techniques, uh, simpler surgical techniques, more efficient techniques, so that the patient, when the knowledge is applied to the patient, the surgical uh, uh, efficiency there, duration of surgery is decreased, the exposure to anesthetic uh, drugs and uh, uh, post-operative stay in the hospital is decreased, better uh, uh, outcome, surgical outcome, diagnostic procedures, endoscopies, all these things are routinely done in our uh, department. So we are always, pro that's why I said in the beginning, anatomy is a unique department. Paramedical personnel, the training, the uh, nursing students, the biotechnology students, the uh, technicians, uh, speech and hearing students, all the, we have one dozen course, all of them are exposed to this because they should be equally efficient uh, like our doctors to know about what is the disease. And we also use these organs and bodies for uh, teaching public. It may be emergencies, it may be first aid, because uh, everywhere doctors cannot be present uh, at the moment of the emergency. So people should be bold enough. They should be able to do something which can prevent uh, further complications, further uh, deterioration till the uh, aid, first aid or the doctors or the hospital emergency um, team are arises. So till then we educate. People, most of the time what we see is seeing a drop of blood, they become panicky. So we tell them, you're going to save somebody's life. Think of it. So all these things. We uh, conduct a lot of research work. It is me long back. And all these different organs are taken up. We Luckily, we are uh, uh, having a uh, good contact with uh, the uh, different universities, different funding agencies. When we say we are doing this, they always say, no, no, we know you, but uh, you and your college, uh, they give it. So in that way, we get a lot of support. And this is a very important. There is absolutely no adequate substitute for human body. We cannot make it out of rubber or a plastic or whatever. In the virtual ones can never, never be real. So we really need a body. Yes. Human cadavers are a critical component of medical education. Cadaver means a dead body, right? So we have a uh, body donation association where people register for donation. They, uh, something goes wrong with them. The relatives uh, call me up. I work 24 hours a day, 365 days. And this was established in 1995 when I was the head of the department and I'm the secretary since then. It's a great experience. Each donation is a great experience. Luckily, uh, many times he was a politician, uh, DTJ Kumar from Nanjangu nearby place, our Swamiji also you can see. On the day of inauguration, he recently had come to our mutt, Swamiji's mutt, and uh, many other people sitting there are also uh, registered for donation. A couple of them uh, also have donated. And uh, Swamiji said, uh, can we go to medical for about half an hour? There's a small program. He said, what is the program? He said, come, we'll, I'll show you what is that. I was a secretary. So on the day of inauguration of this body donation association, Swamiji said, just in five minutes, tell the purpose of this body donation association. Quickly, I enlisted the important highlights of the program. And uh, after finishing this, uh, I wanted to honor him. They, he literally snatched away, no, no doctor. You're doing a great work. We politicians, you know, I don't need to say anything about it. You deserve it. Even though he said, no, so he's okay. He said, uh, you need to be honored. You're doing a great work. And uh, during his speech, he said, I'm really more than impressed with uh, medical college and Swamiji's uh, instructions. Right today, I've decided to donate my body. Uh, please give me a registration a form or whatever. I'll fill it up and uh, send it immediately. After my death, the body has to be taken to this. And he also made a joke saying that I'm not talking like a politician who they give assurances in which never uh, will be carried out. It's not so as far as this is concerned. After some years, he died. His wife called me up. We got the body. We used it also. So in that way, people change their attitudes. Okay, now let's go to the different donations, eye donations. People have a uh, wrong impression that whole eyeball, like a camera, is taken out and put into another person. No, it's not true. There are so many complex parts in the eye. All of them cannot be trans, uh, transplanted. The nerves are very, very complex. They cannot be transplanted. Only the front portion, you can see this uh, child actually, six years old child, where the front glass, we have seen the watch glass, the front portion of it, the plastic or the glass has to be transparent to see the uh, clock or the time. In the same way, if we have to see the outside world, the front convex part of this eye, which is called as the cornea, 
has to be totally transparent. Unfortunately, this particular child I know was born since uh, uh, birth, this was the corneal opacification. It can happen uh, due to so many causes. It may be infections, it may be injuries. Some people are, some children are playing, something falls into the eye, they rub, all these things. Unfortunately, this child cannot see anything clear, cloudy, as though you kept a translucent sheet in front of your eyes and seeing. It looks so awkward and so ghastly to us. So when somebody dies, uh, sometimes we took the whole eyeball, but we can just take the front transparent portion. It takes only two to three minutes. Right in front of the relatives, we explain to them, there is no uh, bleeding at all. It is a very simple procedure. We take them and they are also so happy in a way that uh, the person's eyes are going to be used. So two eyes or two corneas are uh, transplanted to two different people with corneal opacity. So I want to stress again, whole eyeball cannot be transplanted. Maybe sometime later, technology or uh, science may improve where other, other uh, causes for blindness may also be corrected. But right now, it's only the cornea. And from the second it is transplanted, the person is able to see the beautiful world. So eye donation has to be done. Even after death, it can be done within six hours after death. I get a phone call. Middle of the night, I get a phone call. One o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. Sorry, Dr. Shamsundar, we are disturbing you. Know? I said, no problem. Tell me what is the thing. Just know my grandfather, whoever it is, died maybe five minutes back. He had registered for eye donation or body donation. Tell us what is the thing to be done. So I explained to them, absolutely no problem. Up to six hours, we can uh, take the thing cover the eye with a cloth or a cotton, close the eyelid, cover it, don't put any fan and anything like that. See that there is no dust. Early morning, I will come myself or bring one of my eye specialists and uh, things will be taken care of. So within six hours, we take it. There is a fluid or a liquid in which we store it. It can be trans kept for nearly 48 hours. And within that 48 hours, we contact people who got this corneal blindness and they would have registered also for uh, corneal uh, transplantations. We don't give uh, both the corneas to one person because there is one eye is good enough for him to see the world, another person. So two people are benefited with one eye or one person's size. So it's a very simple procedure, just like uh, changing the watch glass. It is done by ophthalmologists to blind people. Are, uh, and nowadays, the technology has improved. Even though it's hardly a millimeter thin cornea, the technology is there. The cornea can be again layered, split into layers. Two or three layers can be done. That means instead of two people, four people, or even sometimes six people can be given. Remaining portions gross. So there's a great uh, uh, advancement of uh, knowledge and uh, skills, right? So corneal transplant, it is called as. So two people, minimum two people can uh, get transplant. Somebody had uh, sent me a message saying that if you want to have your eyes still living after your death, donate it. What a great thing, right? So you can see the part of the body living in somebody else's after my death. This is a very interesting thing. See this, another patient adult, the whole cornea has become cloudy and there's an ulcer also. You can see the left dark one. So he's unable to see. He can only see some image, vague image. He cannot identify. So these are the people who are benefited and uh, next minute, provided the main portion of the eye is normal. That is important. If the person is totally blind since birth, his retina is not working, lens is not working, it may not be possible. So the eye specialist is going to assess that as long as the remaining part of the eye is normal, he's going to transplant this. I told you the cornea, which is less than a millimeter in thickness, is so many. Under microscope, this is the way we see. So it can be sliced into at least four slices. And the remaining part of the slice grows. That's very interesting. It does not even need blood supply. Is one of the few organs without blood supply can still survive. That's why even after death, we can take it for six hours. Whereas other organs, organs die, start dying within minutes. So this can be sliced and the sliced one can be put onto the many other members. So front portion can be put to one person, back portion and there, another eye like this. And they take up, really take up little antibiotics and the care. So immediately surgery is taken up, not only for this eye, any other uh, organs. So very efficient uh, uh, transplant surgeons are there. They are dedicated. They feel happy when the person next uh, day uh, says, I'm fine, sir. There's the happiness a uh, doctor gets. Let's go to the kidney. Probably next in the list, a common uh, organ which is transplanted. Why do we need a kidney transplantation is the main question. Uh, a few words about his uh, uh, 
location and uh, structure, I would like to say. They are present in the abdomen, the tummy region, in the back, very well protected. And believe me, I respect these kidneys like anything because they are the housekeepers of our body. Many times we have experienced a lady who is supposed to come and clean our house, a person who is supposed to clean our cloth or uh, wash utensils does not turn up. You can see the lady of the house is so much irritating. She shouts at everybody, including the husband. So this is the one which works 24 hours a day without any break. It identifies all the chemicals, poisonous chemicals, identifies them and molecule by molecule, it uh, filters it like a coffee filter, puts it as urine, puts it out. So here I would like to uh, caution you one thing. Do not take any medicine without doctor's prescription. We see people going to the medical store, medical store people are not, the, work, uh, the boys working there are not educated. They may just be a SLC or PUC pass or even failed. Whatever you ask, they give that. Lot of medicines are dangerous, uh, what we call as nephrotoxic. They damage the kidneys. Only doctors who have been trained, not even the quacks, allopathy doctors or any other doctors who are trained in these medicines should prescribe only them. We have seen one tablet has totally caused both the kidneys damage, acute renal failure, what we call. And you can understand, kidney does not function from the second. Water starts accumulating in the body. The whole body bloats up, face to leg, and uh, poisonous materials, waste materials accumulate in the body. And if he's not treated immediately, he can die. So such a dangerous thing. So dialysis we have heard of. So dialysis is only a temporary process of replacing the function of the kidney. So these are the kidneys, beautiful bean-shaped organs, uh, hardly about to three and a half to four inches in uh, height and a couple of inches in breadth. Excellently, they do work. They are a pair of them. Both of them need not be working at full 100% efficiency. 50% is more than enough. They share their work. Even if one of the kidneys is failing and uh, totally zero, the other kidney can take over. That's a very interesting uh, fact of people. One kidney is good enough. We also see some patients, the other kidney has not even developed since birth. One kidney is good enough. So we have to take care of the kidneys, avoiding the chemicals in our diet, the poisonous chemicals, the contaminated food, junk food, and self-medication. And once the kidneys die, extremely important to, uh, difficult to correct them. So this is the kidney. So kidneys taken from, uh, uh, now the change is, carne can be taken after death, six hours, but all the remaining organs have to be taken when the heart is beating. That's the only catch. Even though we have got cadaveric transplant and all that, the blood circulation has to be going on in every organ as we are taking it out. Once we take it out, we have got our own liquids and fluids. We can process them and keep it for many hours. But at the time of taking it out, it has to be alive because once the blood supply stops, oxygen and nutrition stop and it starts dying. It may be a question of uh, minutes and hours. So, a brain dead person where the heart is working, part of the brain is not working. Such people we see in the papers that uh, his different organs were taken, given to different people. Yes. How can to be heart? Every organ is important. How can to be heart is the most important organ because that's the one which uh, pumps the blood throughout the body every second, irrespective of your working or sleeping or whatever. Absolutely, there's no rest 24 hours a day, even before the birth of the baby right from 22nd day after conception. The baby is hardly of the size of a small rice uh, grain. In that, there is a heart beating, even though it may not be pushing any blood. There is a muscle alternately contracting irregularly, 22nd day of uh, pregnancy till the last second of our life. So even before the baby is born, heart is in a fully working condition. So it has to be working. For any reason, there is a disease of the heart, uh, surgeries cannot be done or failure of the surgeries. When the brain dead person, the relatives agree. And we have also seen the very unfortunate uh, stories about uh, selling the kidney, selling uh, hormones, all those things. We feel very guilty about it also being a part of the system. Anyway, that's not happening nowadays because the rules regulations are good enough. So different organs can be taken. The heart is taken immediately by team of surgeons in the other operation theater next door, another patient chest has been opened, kept ready. Immediately next few minutes, it is transferred onto it and it starts working. So another person lives for another 10 years, 20 years. So your heart is working in somebody else's. That's the greatness. Otherwise, if I die and uh, put into fire or put it, uh, uh, put it underground, it's gone. Whereas this can give somebody a great life.
Yes, serious, we see. Unfortunately, no, India happens to be reaching the number one in heart attacks. Cancer and heart attacks happen to be number one causes of death. Yes, there is a heart. Because of the pollution, air pollution, you can see the color of the lungs. On either side, what you see on the left side is the pure, beautiful lung at the time of birth. Because of the air pollution, the whole lung is deposited with the carbon particles, dust particles, bacteria, viruses, it become black. And over that, our great friends are there who pay money for smoking, buy the cigarettes and spoil their health and maybe others. Even the heart is being damaged. You can see the heart has become enlarged. So all these bad habits have to be avoided. See the lungs, for example, even the lungs can be transplanted. That's a very interesting thing. Lungs can be transplanted when the lung is damaged due to um, infection, cysts, cancer. Number one cancer lung is due to smoking. Every cigarette they have calculated can take away your 15 minutes of your life. So maybe somebody makes a joke. My grandfather was smoking. He lived for 100 years. Let's not take uh, this funny examples. Let's not... Uh, uh, calculate those things, but it can definitely cause damages. So cancer lung is number one in men, but unfortunately, I always put a blame. Women, with due respect to all of them, are trying to make them equivalent. We are in no way inferior to men. So some of the men have stopped uh, smoking. Women have started to become a fashion. India also started. Western country is very common. So absolutely no differentiation. Both men and women can have lung cancer. So such situation, see this, there is a big cyst there on the left side next to the heart. So they can uh, kill the person through the heart and lung uh, dysfunctioning. So such people are benefited with a lung transplantation. Of course, this again, when the person is still living, heart is working, respiration is going on, only brain dead. See the size of the heart, beautiful heart of the size of a fist, a great organ. There are valves which maintain uniform, unidirectional flow. Valves can be damaged due to infections, bacteria, viral, due to birth defects. So all these valves can be replaced. Artificial valves are available. The donated valves are also possible easily. And he becomes perfectly normal next minute. Number one disease in India and most of the countries is heart diseases. It may be congenital, that is since birth, due to infections, due to cholesterol-related issues, um, due to changes in the food habits, stress. Stress is number one nowadays. Stress is related to every disease, including cancer. Lungs, I told you already, beautiful organ, which helps in exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide, maintained very well. Happily, you should be able to cross 100 years of life. But unfortunately, due to our own mistakes, we see this lung cancer, left upper lobe cancer, very common. Liver is becoming popular nowadays, liver transplantations. Yes, I always make a joke in the, with the students and youngsters. Tirthankararu, what is this Tirthankararu? Is he talking about change? No, 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 I have respect for the now those. We have another category of evening Tirthankararu who feel that they feel uh, ill. Yes, we have these fellows. They have got 100 reasons to say why they are drinking, but I got only one reason to say that they can die anytime. Liver is the one which gets damaged. Thousands of liver cells, hepatocytes, get damaged with a single drop of alcohol. Alcohol has absolutely zero, absolutely no health benefit. Not that I am not an alcoholic, I'm telling. Even the people, doctors are also there. Maybe they take occasionally. They also say that alcohol is a bad for health, right? So liver is one organ which gets destroyed. Drop by drop, thousands of cells. Obesity is another thing which is a result of the so many factors, stress, diabetes, uh, food changes, irregular food habits, unbalanced food habits, uh, other alcohol and smoking. Alcohol also adds to this overweight and obesity. See this, men and women. See the left one, hepatitis, either due to a bacterial or a viral, the liver is being damaged. It's a wonderful organ, more than 100 functions. All the food that you take is processed excellently. It's like a factory, great food factory. All the food in the world is manufactured in one factory. Believe it. There's the way liver is. And every second, the liver cells are being damaged. You can see that factory is getting shut down. Every drop, every molecule of the food you have taken partially is processed in the intestine, absorbed into the blood and sent to the liver for further processing, storage, conversion, different chemicals. 
hepatitis due to viruses, hepatitis virus, B, C, we have A, P, C, D and all that. So we should be careful regarding the hygiene, food hygiene and uh, liquid hygiene. And with that, these are in the central part, cirrhosis, whole liver is being converted to fibrous tissue, is not working. Just like our uh, factory is shut down and uh, is junk. A third one is hepatocellular carcinoma or cancer. So they lead in that direction. So keeping a healthy diet, clean food, clean water, and no alcohol. Definitely liver is going to take care of you wonderfully for more than 100 years. One can actually live for 100 years. Uh, this is a new addition, pancreas. Pancreas is a wonderful organ. And uh, because of this, we are all healthy without diabetes. Otherwise, everybody would have been uh, sweet people, not sweet to look at, but sweet by their uh, sugar levels. And it produces uh, two things. One is the pancreatic juice necessary for uh, digestion of fat, carbohydrates, minerals, proteins, everything. But on the other side, the hormone, glucagon and insulin. Insulin is produced by this. And we know every day we have been seeing, maybe about 30, 35 years back, we used to see patients 45, 50 years as diabetics, elderly people, diabetes. No, I'm seeing youngsters, 20, 21. Uh, I told you that I operate a young fellow, maybe a girl or a boy comes to me with a small, uh, tumor or surgery, I tell them, have you got any blood test done? Yes, sir. Everything is fine, sir. Uh, do you have the report? No, sir. I got it done last year. Everything is fine, sir. They are hesitant to get the test done. Two reasons. One is uh, maybe the prick of the needle. Second one is the fear that something positive may come. So I'm very particular. At least a few tests are compulsory for me, hemoglobin or uh, blood sugar. When I write RBS, no, sir, there's no sugar for me. What about your parents? No, dad has, is under control. What about my mom? Uh, mom only recently she has got. So both the parents are there. Genetics is there. And why not this fellow get? He said, I'm very happy that you don't have. Casually, we get it done routinely. With all hesitation, gets it done. And as he coming next day to me, I can see it's a change in the face. Uh, how are you? Did you get the report, sir? Really shocking, sir. The blood sugar level is 300 plus. Are you sure? Is yours only? Yes, I cross-checked it. What you said, you don't have diabetes. See, we are seeing a lot of... One of them is stress. Please note this. It's not the genetics. It's not uh, damage to the pancreas. Stress is one of the things which leads to diabetes. Type 1 diabetes. Children at birth are having the diabetes. So such people, cancer of pancreas is becoming very common. Infections of pancreas are becoming common. So to replace that, pancreas from another person is taken out and uh, transplanted. Yes, after again, after death. Skin, very interesting. Very interesting is uh, yeah, skin can be transplanted to another person who has lost skin, either due to major surgery, a cancer of the part, along with the skin we have to remove. A burn, large area of burn, skin has to be removed. Skin disease itself, we need uh, to remove it. Or due to any other uh, plastic corrections, uh, some contractures or uh, redoing it, uh, new organ uh, formations, we do it. All those things need skin. Mm -hmm. So from another matching donor, skin is transplanted. The way I'm telling appears like uh, you just uh, change a carburetor or a spark plug or a battery. No, it's not as simple as this. The part, uh, the persons uh, and the two persons tissues are get matched. Is a big affair. It's not going to that. Only if they match with each other, they can be done. It's not uh, like on machines, anything can be put, right? So skin is a very complex organ made up of three layers and every part is so important. In fact, it happens to be one of the heaviest organs, you know, about eight to 10 kgs of skin. Each one of us have got different parts, different uh, structures, but wonderfully it takes uh, from the same person, one part to another part. Very commonly we see in the burns transplanted. This also grows, it also takes. But sometimes when the area is very large from a dead person, skin be taken. Skin can be taken and transplanted. That's also possible. And uh, matching colors, matching uh, hair, you know, they, all those things are taken care of. Wonderful. So instead of burning the skin or burying the skin or any part, why not transplant? This, this is one of our specialty. Inside the ear, we see a lot of people having a hearing problem, deafness, partial deafness. When I go to the schools and the junior uh, category, I tell them, the girls are very dangerous fellows. People look at me, what is wrong with the girls? They have a weapon in the, with them always. Weapon, what is this? Shamsa has uh, got a confused uh, 
they have got a hairpin they take out the hairpin some irritation is there in the nose they put the hairpin and try to clean or they definitely have a safety pin put the safety pin try to clean that they are all very very delicate uh, things eardrum is as thin as a paper thin paper kite paper it can get damaged next minute he says wah what did you say i cannot hear what a social problem similarly inside this tim- uh, eardrum or tympani memory there are three small ear ossicles you can see the white of them few millimeters two or three millimeters once they get damaged due to any cause very difficult to repair them very very complex of them so we have a thought why not to take it artificial ones are the available teflon and platinum and all that we thought they are expensive why not take it from a dead body we tried this this is the second in the world uh, ent department along with my department we took it out from the dead body sterilized it cleaned it preserved it in minus 80 degree centigrade we tamper it works excellently so we are uh, we put up a project once it is through we are going to do it free of cost so such things are possible from a dead person so many things can be harvested that's what my intention is so what are the consequences of donation i told you rejection because if the two do not match even a drop of blood cannot match with the other person unless it's smashed rejection whole organ can be rejected whatever you have taken the person who was given and the time and energy spent by the surgeons becomes a waste if it is rejected so a lot of uh, Tests are done to see matching is there. Even after that, there can be a rejection. So immune suppressants are given. It's as simple as you bring a dog to your house, which is a new area for that. You have to train the dog to not to bark or certainly not to bite any other new uh, occupants. The same way, immune suppressants are going to tell the kidney, do not uh, tell the person not to reject this uh, kidney or any other organ. It has been taken throughout life. It's quite expensive also. But somebody's life is... Uh, preserved psychological trauma a lot of these things are there we have to counsel them somebody's organ is working in me there is a man man's organ or a woman's organ i do not know a lot of these things kidney belong to some uh, uh, lower strata person i am a very high strata person all the psychological things right all those things are to be taken care of legal issues are there i told you kidney rackets all all those things nowadays uh, are uh, taken up infections can be there so all these are really taken care of by the team of donation uh, so we have a depression brain back even though brain cannot be maybe uh, 10 years 50 years 100 years later brain transplantation may occur as it happens in some movies but it's not uh, as easy is extremely complex one millions and millions of nerve fibers cannot be connected to each other but some cells are being tried some cells small portions are being tried to transplant in animal uh, experiment they have been working yes it's fine it may work in a small area where dead cells of the brain can be treated anyway now we have the uh, banks different types of banks with that it can be possible so depression uh, why i am stressing on this is we are involved in a small group uh, of the depression depression appears to be one of the serious diseases in the world psychiatry depression appears to be one so we took out the brains of people who came for uh, Uh, died and came for a post-mortem examination with all the formalities of permissions we took with them and tried to find out what actually is going on. Minus 80 deep freezers, we kept the brain in the deep freezers, we analyzed different components of our DNAs, uh, their uh, chemical structures, uh, post-mortem MRI, MRI of the brain, different uh, trace elements, neurotransmitters, so many things we analyzed. We thought it's a depression is a social uh, a social psychological event somebody is cold dead somebody lost something somebody failed his examination they committed suicide and we came out with a very funny explanation saying that is not only that factor that may be only a triggering factor but uh, there is a factor inside the brain there are some changes occurring in the brain due to so many chemical changes occurring particular trace elements we found a lot of changes in the trace elements which led to changes in their behavior their moods which were uh, a uh, drill like a atom bomb i always used to say this uh, depression brain is like an atom bomb it needs a spark to be lighted for bursting in that way a depressed person is uh, brain is uh, having some changes in the brain his behavior a social trigger a failure or uh, some negative thing suddenly is going to commit suicide nobody plans and uh, organizes uh, suicide you know suddenly traction of a moment it so such things so we try to analyze the blood we try to analyze the cerebrospinal fluid which is a liquid present around the brain where the similar changes are present we are so happy we could demonstrate changes in the brain the different trace elements 
was similar to changes in the cerebrospinal fluid, which was exactly similar changes in the blood also. That means take a sample of blood from a person who is uh, started depression or going to go for a depression or already in a depression, forecast he can go for a suicide. I always used to tell, I got the gold medal also for this particular work, along with my team. It doesn't belong to me, it's my team, where I presented saying that a very rich person loses one uh, lakh, let us say, it's a big amount given for a rich person. He didn't commit suicide. He tried to conduct meetings and find some more, say to say that, okay, we will uh, be a little careful next time. He got it back. But after a short period of time, when he was able to go to his office, he's a big person, managing director, his wife reminded him, Are bhai, sham ko zara pehle ana. I don't want to say about the occasion, don't sit in our office up to 8.30 and all that. Unfortunately, because of the busy schedules, nine o'clock was over. Suddenly, it reminded him of his uh, wife. He has forgotten the occasion. It was his wife's birthday. He came back. She was furious, went to his room, hanged himself. Such a trivial, he could have convinced there was an important uh, meeting. Okay, now we'll go to a restaurant, have food, maybe go to a movie, have fun. This is a very simple thing. They can always give you excuses. They would definitely be unhappy because of a birthday. A person who lost one lakh did not commit suicide, whereas a small uh, defense opinion might become angry. Such things can happen because of the behavior changes. So this can be prevented. I told them because of uh, little knowledge I have gained in this depression, if I can save one person from dying, committing suicide, my life is worth it. See, that way we have uh, developed a brain bank. So many brain banks are there. Ours is the second in the world, first one in the Netherlands. So there are so many others. So Croatia visited for the international research. Nimans has got a different brain bank, not exactly depression. So many I mean, So it's very interesting to work in these things. Bones are another asset. We can take bone from uh, dead people. A lot of fractures, a lot of bone cancers are seen nowadays, osteomyelitis, right? So such bones can be transferred. There are more than 200 bones. Many of them, bone marrows are very important. So bone marrow uh, transplantation is very important. So this is treasure. This is a fetal skull. We try to create awareness about body donation and organ donation. So when a person dies, let the different parts die along with them and join the soil or the air. Let's be bold enough, open enough to give away them. We are not asking for when you're alive. If your organs like a kidney can be given up when you're alive, but many other organs can be given at the time of death before you just die. So we conduct uh, programs, we invite uh, big people, they give talks, people get impressed and a uh, lot of people come for registration. I, Madam has already told, our college is one of the few colleges which has got the highest number of registration. More than 3,000 people are registered to donate their bodies. And we have got the highest number of donations also. More than 400 plus people have donated bodies after death. So people's awareness has changed now. And uh, people are thinking, let me be of some help to them. Even after death, let my body be of some help. That's the concept. Uh, to make these things a little more uh, serious, uh, somebody asked me a question, Dr. Shamsundar, what about your personal thing? Have you registered for donation? Yes, I have to answer the question. I told them, of course, the first name in that list of uh, 3,000 plus people is the name of the person whom you're talking to. They said, okay, good, good sir. Because many times we tell others to do it, we don't do it ourselves, right? So we have got the massive body donation programs. As you can see, 3,400 people. Unfortunately, because of COVID, since one year, we are not uh, receiving the donations. More than 35 bodies, uh, unfortunately, I had to refuse because of the directives from the government. See this lady, what a great lady. A life only for others is worth a while, isn't it? So many of the seniors would know uh, G.T. Narayan Rao, writer, professor of uh, mathematics, Kannada writer, his body has been donated and plastinated. People looking into his body say, no, we want to again register. So purpose is transplantation, teaching, surgical training, workshop, research, museums, exhibitions, self education. Uh, benefits I've already told many, many times. Let me, yes, I told you, uh, my museum is always busy, except this one year, we feel uh, lonely, we feel sad, nobody's coming. A lot of children, but from villages, you can see it's a government village school. So, so curious to see different organs, different parts. So another uh, specialty of our uh, department is uh, plastination, which is a dry preservation. 
you have prepared and even the blind children come there they touch the specimen touch and feel experience all the organs including some of the animals we have preserved so application or clinical anatomy we teach in our department so that the doctors of the future right in the first mbbs they learn the importance of becoming doctors they are very proud so different procedures can be done even in the dead body like uh, injections are given in the lumbar region for causing anesthesia taking this yes so all this can be demonstrated in the dead body so donations even fetus fetus is a baby before birth so people donate the babies when they die we have more than 69 uh, so we try to find out what is the cause of their death no couple no family would be interested to have a baby dead aborted so we try to find out if there's any important uh, reasons for that we communicate to them so in the next pregnancy can be a little careful it happens so all these uh, babies we get unfortunately they would have died due to some reasons we educate them have a good balanced diet during your uh, pregnancy time preventive prevention is better than cure something goes wrong we collect the baby we try to analyze it uh, what is going to happen to that and any information we very honestly pass it on to the doctor who has uh, sent the baby or to the family members if available see this hydrocephalus such things can be operated i have operated a lot of them and the head has been filled up with a more amount of cerebrospinal fluid we drain it and the baby becomes already provided brain has not already been damaged see the, there are tumors in the back is a spinal cord tumor and we operate them the baby becomes all right so educating people is very important for them so ignorance is going to cause a lot of uh, inconvenience and complications so all these things are technical we preserve them in a liquid known as formulaic injecting into the chemical i have designed a small machine i told you a lot of hobbies are there this is a sprayer which you would have seen in the fields and uh, some construction houses to what are cueing purposes this i use for uh, preservation injecting the form it hardly takes 10 minutes earlier we used to spend half an hour to one hour doing this uh, preservation but now it's hardly 10 minutes my technicians and colleagues are very happy about it so use your brain as a hobby for uh, other purposes to prevent putrefaction and other things and i am the secretary i work 24 hours a day and uh, maybe i have a little patience probably people have taught me patience even in the middle of the night i don't get upset they said no problem i'm awake tell me so i answer to them regarding the body donation eye donations i go to their house personally there's one thing which probably is special about jss i go to their house more than 300 times i've gone in my ambulance talk to them console them saying that you have done a great work he has lived uh, we don't have technology and the medical knowledge to bring back anybody that at least you have done some things at least some organs can be differently used for some other things they realize that they say thank you so much doctor you are taking trouble and nowadays we see that relatives don't come opposite house people don't come friends don't come when the person dies and they say this i'm not chilling they say this you are coming sir you are no way connected to our family i said i'm a human being when somebody is uh, suffering feeling bad about somebody uh their uh, loving person died is not my responsibility as a doctor that you my selfishness you gave me body and that i'm using it for some good purposes my selfishness they say no sir you're great see that way we can do a lot of good things it does not cost energy it does not cost time but you can do some good things each person can think of a small thing to do good things before i sleep every day i just uh call back from the time i got up in the morning till uh, this minute did you do anything good to anybody else? When I think I had done a couple of good things, I get a good sleep. A fellow asked me, who had a little disturbance in sleep, doctor, if you don't mistake, can I have a question? Yes, there's absolutely nothing to mistake at all. Do you get good sleep? Are you healthy? Absolutely healthy till the last second of my life. I do not know when it's going to be. After that, my body is going to be donated on the latest side. And luckily, my sleep right now if i close my eyes in about 10 seconds i get a good sleep and never get up unless uh, my mobile rings and early morning maybe six o'clock i belong to uh, a great person who wakes up a little late uh, surya mamshi <laughs> not four o'clock five o'clock like other people so when i get up i'm fresh even in the middle of the night i get up i'm fresh so in that way have little stress understand yourself try to do something good only when you do get bad things to yourself or to others, your stress is there subconsciously. But when you're doing good things, your happiness is there, your whole body relaxes, and you feel happy, good, good sleep. He said, said, really great sentence you have told. Today, right from today, I will practice this. After one week, 
believe me i'm not joking he kept back and said from the time i visited last time having a good sleep sir every day as you said before i sleep i think of what good things i have done to others maybe small little things and i'm getting good sleep i'm not taking any medicine at all he was on uh, uh, tablets for sleeping no he has totally stopped such things happen you can advise you can it need not be a doctor who has to advise others everybody else can do it so life after life let somebody live after you die that's my concept right there are a lot of uh, myths and these things all those uh, questions i've already answered right in the beginning right we allow people to come and see the body after 10 to 15 days this is only possible because of donation otherwise if you bury the body or burn the body nobody can come and see it. a lot of people are abroad the children are abroad they come out one week or uh, 15 days later they can come and see their body but only thing is we maintain the uh, secrecy regarding the organ donation because uh, something legally can go on so we don't uh, tell to whom your uh, relative's organ has been transplanted only medical legal cases we don't accept any uh, accidents suicides murders those things uh, we do not accept that's why we ask for a official original death certificate from a qualified doctor otherwise somebody murders and gives the body to me i'll be in problem so in that way we expect so body or parts cannot be given to others uh, some sentiments will be there we talk to them and uh, so see this elderly person how happy is many times we have passed. silly small little things we are unhappy we fight many times we see people being killed for uh, very silly things right so you can change your attitude you can change your lifestyle right this was uh, my mother probably was surprised why i'm using the word this is i would have said this was such an enthusiastic 93 years she was happy no diabetes no hypertension no obesity no stress maybe uh, that was the last day suddenly she collapsed because of a massive heart attack till the last minute you can see the cross stitch there lot of hobbies she is uh, music fine arts crafts making dolls all of them i invited uh, madam malini will know that uh, jeans have come to me also all those things i do be happy finally be happy so she said very good work you are doing you got your donation of course she didn't say directly you can donate my body also after death about 11 years back we donated her body her body is still there plastinated why i said she is uh, my mother even today i can see my mother after 11 years in my department very rare opportunity isn't it my sister died about 6 years back uh, she was also of a similar philosophy we donated uh, her body to college and plastered it and uh, i can see 2014 had enough of uh, story about the death and these things i'm not scaring you but we to do something good when we are alive if not if you're not satisfied you have not done anything good at all when you were alive at least think whether you can do something good after death you can register for uh, organ donation you can do registration for body donation even if you do not do also one can always think of it hope i have made a few words clear to you saying that let us be happy in doing something good to others so this is not the end this is the beginning of something good to others so incidentally uh, my father was a veterinary doctor in his name i'm giving a gold medal to the student who scores highest marks in anatomy because i had the privilege of getting a government of india national merit scholarship without spending 1 rupee i'm not joking i studied puc bsc mbbs ms is not my responsibility to the society and to the government to put it back in that way i'm giving a small is a small amount hardly five or six thousand rupees yes some encouragement so this is the girl from kerala every year one candidate gets the highest marks 25 years or 26 years i've been giving me some encouragement to students they become good doctors they always remember after 10 years they come back and say sir dr shamsundar sir i was your student i got the gold medal uh, subject of anatomy physiology whatever so Let's have a good relationship with them. So I told you a few hobbies. I made this Radha Krishna myself without any help from my mother or sister. They used to make it on a competition in 1980 exactly. That means 30, 40 years back. Yes, still there in my house. I got the first prize also. So enjoy it. Whatever you do, enjoy it. Wish you a very happy, healthy, wonderful life. Be careful about your corona. and your health is in your hands don't blame other don't blame doctor don't blame the government or system is you know hats be careful take care of yourself you can always be happy make others happy so recently i got the 
lifetime achievement award uh, i always recognize people on the your extreme left is my principal which is wife so swami ji is there a lot of great people are there <clears throat> the lady sitting next to me was here her husband was a uh, rajan nayar he used to have a very great uh, work of healing people low some energy is difficult to understand unfortunately he died of a liver or a cancer so posthumously his wife was given this award so three people got the award and uh, madhuri tatachari on the back lady she was the one who gave this uh, awards to us so we are all the great so you can see the smile in swami ji's face smile be happy make us happy this is our uh, so thank you so much for patiently i don't know who it is you guess it <laughs>
and there is a but the recipient person has to take the definitely infections. very very important very important so infections bacteria are waiting uh, to cause infection in order person themselves uh, risk and a person with immune suppressants have to use a organ uh, given out from somebody else it is again a guest so one has to be careful question from bhargavi sir bhargavi yes uh, can bhargavi. hypertension at diabetic patient donate organs yes very much absolutely is only a change in their uh, biology that has caused a hypertension diabetes they can always donate only cancer we do not take active aids we do not take because we do not want to get infection if neuro serious neurological problems we do not take because uh, we do not really know the cause of uh, neurological problems and cancers say, of any kind we do not take otherwise we usually take it of course they can all donate still i have got one more second chance all of them can donate but not directly used for transplantation to another person but for research purposes this can be transplanted to a animal animal experiments so Sir, such things are there. i have a doubt hmm. if person already registered for donation yes by chance if he commits suicide it becomes accident. a medical legal case simple or met accident accident is a medical legal case suicide is a medical case medical legal case and if he is murder also it becomes a medical legal case Then suicide uh, we cannot take, take. Even we cannot take correct many times it's happened the family members feel so bad sir mm -hmm. you know him you know our family yes i know them personally but because of this medical legal because the body has to be examined autopsy what we call post mortem examination and no organ can be given to us because uh, there can be questions in the court of law saying that the report given by the particular doctor is wrong or whatever it has to re examined so all those things are there so we cannot Uh, many times it so happens the other way is they won't have mentioned that uh, the person is dead due to this they saying it's natural death and i am very particular about a death certificate somebody has uh, consumed a poison uh, previous night yeah. or somebody has given a poison along with milk or something he dies early morning they have a big drama uh, all those things they say you know my this person uh, slept very well we were talking up to 12 o'clock and he didn't get up in the morning his body has to be donated and as a recipient a person receiving i cannot take the responsibility of giving a certificate whereas i tell them you the family doctor is there or take the body or call the doctor to your house and those people have been trained we can make out whether it's a natural death or a unnatural death and any doubt post mortem is always there so such thing can happen they tell sir you are a doctor you only give certificate and take the body no i cannot give it because i am the receiving person many times it has uh, created some uh, difference opinion also so no no doctor is available no doctor is coming and all that so for legal purposes we really need a certificate in that way a few bodies were lost also we couldn't help it because uh, uh, it happens for example simple thing is i take the body with whatever uh, belief i know the family and all that i take it after two days uh, one of the relatives due to whatever a difference of opinion in their family calls the police and says actually the person who died day for yesterday actually did not die of natural heart attack there was a little uh, difference opinion in the children uh, sons who are regarding the money or uh, whatever other assets so they killed him or he committed suicide then the police will come to me doctor there is a body donated to you is a thing so in that way we have to transfer the body to post mortem anyway uh, there is no risk for me one thing is they gave a certificate saying that is natural death so you can uh, take it further and ask the doctor but as far as i am concerned i have received the body so such thing confusion should not be there Any other questions? How many hours you have to do? Uh, 12 hours is most ideal. In a cold weather, up to 18 hours, 20 hours, we can do it. Nowadays, we got the freezer boxes, which keeps the body at uh, lower temperature, up to 24 hours uh, there. Only caution we tell is, if the person has died of infection, diabetes infection, the chances of putrefaction, mm -hmm. basic thing is putrefaction should not occur. Chances will be high. So such things in a summer, for example, because of the warmth, mm -hmm. putrefaction will be more. So such thing we tell them. You ship the body. Let your relatives come and see the body in my department. Fifteen days I'll be keeping body outside only. Do it. So it can be. Sir, so I have a doubt. Hmm. Uh, in COVID patient hmm. when they die, uh, if you inject to formalin, this virus will die. Yes, definitely it dies. But uh, the instruction from the government is not to receive any body because uh, uh, I have seen a lot of. Uh, I said thirty-five bodies we have lost. He called up and says, "Dr. Shams, in there, I got a certificate, COVID negative. Yes, COVID negative certificate. We do not know the authenticity of the certificate. And you have seen in the papers and news uh, uh, from uh, Bombay, some place it came to Mandya. And when they did it again, it was positive. And I am bothered about my attenders and technicians who are doing it. 
unfortunately it becomes positive and false positive false negative and my technician or attender tomorrow morning says i got a fever he's going to sue me in the court of law shams has forced me to do embalming and i got the covid and unfortunately he dies will have a big problem that way government has given an order saying that no donations uh, with covid or otherwise should be taken and i be donated by a diabetic patient yes 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 it will be affected but not the cornea it can be done. as long as the cornea is transparent it can be done very interesting fact is even a newborn child i can be donated because the cornea of the newborn is the same size as a adult you know next time you see a baby look at the eye it is as big as your eye the diameter is 99% or 95% same diameter even the ear ossicle i told you ear bone they are of the same size we always tell the students two organs are of the same size uh, ear drum ear ossicle and the eye at the time of birth is of the adult size so in that way newborn child eye cornea can also be transplanted to adult so there is a very great opportunity to be happy so there are 100 reasons to be happy but there is only one reason to be unhappy you decide as simple as this Yes. Yes. Uh, now, uh, nowadays it's a hobby. I can tell you, like as soon as they give away the newborn child to the family, soon they will take pictures and all. Mm. So doctor also will advise. So what is your guess, advice, sir, for the eyesight? Usually nothing happens. We tell them it can damage the kidney. I mean the eyes because repeatedly if we say nothing is going to happen. The whole uh, one dozen people uh, they start from a uh, clicking to video also. it can definitely the uh, harsh uh, uh, light of the uh, this thing our flashes can definitely affect but it's uh, better to be on the safer side we tell don't take but if the eyes are open you can see that many times when we get a glare you know definitely it may not damage the retina but it definitely it causes uh, inconvenience so okay, if there are no question sir you took us to wonderful thank you thank you so much for giving me opportunity thank you to the spiritual guys Uh, okay. Krishnamurti, okay. Yeah, most most uh, most informative motivation. Thank you so much, Krishnamurti. Uh, only request to Krishnamurti and others is whatever little knowledge I have given, please pass it on to others because uh, I do not know how many people have uh, logged in, uh, and I will not be able to reach the whole uh, hundreds and thousands of people through you. If the knowledge can be disseminated to others, it will be great for you. Okay. And finally, again, take care, be healthy and happy. I request uh, Dr. Chaitra to give word. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, and this session is also available on YouTube. So whoever has missed the uh, session and who want to uh, share this information with your friends or family, you can do so by logging into U O U O F. That is University of Mysore. Uh, uh, Mysore Live uh, through U uh, YouTube channel. Thank uh, you so it's much. It's a great pleasure and uh, honor, sir, to have uh, Dr. Shamsundar here and giving away okay. such a great information and very noble uh, cause. For even after our death, we can live through others. So uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. And uh, I thank uh, our honorable PC uh, for providing this session and also our chairperson, Professor S. S. Mandi. for posting this particular and all my friends there who have done a wonderful uh, work of uh, uh, transmitting in, uh, great for successful successful session over here yes thank you, so much. Thank you.